Hi, how are you, Brittany? Uh, thank you for this opportunity to come here and share a little bit about the future of global e-commerce technology. Uh, I do this presentation about once a year, and actually this year was very, very tough <laughs> because the, uh, the acceleration of speed and the competitiveness in this market has accelerated drastically within just the last year. So I'd like to share a little bit about the different scope of e-commerce that's been changing, uh, as well as the different scenarios that the technology has to support. And then I'll go into a little bit about what technologies will actually change the future of e-commerce more and more. So in terms of scope, uh, hopefully everybody are aware of this, is that in the first phase or first act, it's really about taking traditional physical stores or physical goods and moving it online. So that started you know, way back in the late 1990s. And then as a techno internet technology being adopted more and more, what you'll see is also these digital goods are being created and sold everywhere. And then even then, as I mentioned earlier, that some of them are going back to sort of the offline world. And the most recent trend over the last two years, which is a little bit interesting, is that there are many on-demand services, which is also purchased through, you know, through online, are starting to become a major player in creating new economies, but more importantly, competing or encroaching into traditional e-commerce businesses. So really, you know, the technology platform we're going to build really need to not have these boundaries between all these different scenarios. Versus traditionally, you sort of design for one, but now everything's really uh, merging. So what scenario is different? Well, as everybody knows, the competition is becoming more and more global. And then recently, you know, even Alibaba has uh, IPO in, in the US, so that uh, pretty much all the major uh, economies around the world are trying to compete together at the same time. What does that mean? Well, it means there are these major players around the world that has unlimited money to come up with innovation or copy innovation at a very fast pace. So what can you do with your development team or your technology so you can actually be ahead and stay ahead? Uh, the second thing, which is uh, in, in the next slide I'll show in detail, is really the concept of going from local competition to national competition to global competition, but now I actually go back to direct to consumer competition. Um, and you know the very popular trend right now is really the ability to really purchase anywhere. So for Korea uh, or US or even Japan, I think mobile payment has been here for a long, long time. Uh, but there are many countries where it's still developing. And maybe not through mobile, but maybe through wearables or internet of things that actually they, uh, some of these countries can finally actually purchase from uh, anywhere, anytime. And the hardest part in e-commerce technology that nobody has solved very well, and you see a lot of innovation recently, is around the, around the area of logistics. You know, sure, we can allow you to buy everything, but how do you actually get the product to the consumer? So, in terms of competition, uh, many companies start off, you know, back in the days, so there's the physical stores, and they have become uh, very big global international brands. And then there's a phase where you have many companies who are purely online, uh, that has, you know, grow everywhere and compete. And then about three years ago, um, there are a lot of these mobile e-commerce focused applications that's been growing. And actually a lot of them may be starting to fade away a little bit. But the biggest competition right now in terms of technology is really uh, interesting enough in the messaging space. And this is where a lot of companies are spilling billions of dollars or billions of money to actually acquire these companies because the competition of technology has shifted. So that you want to be able to reach the user anytime, anywhere directly in order to trigger e-commerce. So um, the, the second macro trend is, uh, if you look at the world, you know, again, I think uh, Korea is very advanced like US and uh, Japan, is a lot of developing countries are finally able to also make purchases uh, through various payment methods as well as uh, mobile access. And this is where the next billion people or the last billion people are and that's where I think the e-commerce technology, when you build, you have to factor that in, is that how can I get my product or item to sell into these countries where uh, typically you don't have access to? Because in the more um, first world, you know, you, everywhere is starting to become more saturated, right? So in terms of design, everybody has heard about, oh, mobile first design or mobile accessible, but what happens if, you're, if your technology criteria is mobile only? You know, you don't have PC website to go to to help enhance experience. You actually only have mobile as a way to uh, interact for e-commerce. 
So uh, again, I started this maybe about four years ago. The future is actually now for a lot of these things. And that's what's pretty amazing, is that it's happening faster and faster. So here are some examples where the blurring of OTO, which is a buzzword a few years back, is really, really happening. Uh, for Rakuten and also for SK Planet, I guess there is the ability to earn virtual currencies uh, around the world and be able to really spend it anywhere across any physical shop. Um, for Uber, you know, it's pretty amazing that you can actually go do something like take a taxi ride and be able to, at the end of the ride, just pick up your stuff and go, and you don't even think, have to think about how to pay anymore. Um, Tesco, I think uh, Korea is probably one of the, I think the first market where they tested this, where, you know what, let's actually have a ver uh, fake physical store <laughs> where you can actually go and sort of scan something and be able to buy and have it delivered to, to you at home. Um, and now more recently with Apple Pay, you know, the concept of uh, being able to take a lot of these physical cards put it into a, a collection, which I know many software have done, but more importantly now it provides a secure way to actually use this payment, whether it's through a taxi ride or a retail store, but even online. So now they have the ability to collect all these different payment methods in a secure, single fashion. And you know, the future is actually now, but hopefully I'll talk a little bit more about what is future future coming in. So, uh, so this is another area of technology where before we talk about future, but it's actually happening now, and the technology is dramatically accelerating. And that is the infrastructure side. Okay, so for e-commerce, you can buy many, many, many things, but ultimately at the end, the consumer must get it. So there's many companies now, including big players like Amazon, Rakuten, or even new emerging ones like Uber, are uh, competing around how do you actually do delivery and many options so you can actually reach everybody. Um, as well as, I think the part that's a bit harder is trying to figure out what are different options where the consumer can actually receive the products. So uh, there's sort of two interesting scenarios. One is uh, the ability to deliver something within the next 10 minutes, within the next you know, half an hour. Um, or in the opposite scenario is, you know what, I'm very busy. So I need to be able to go on my own time to pick up the item so that you don't come and deliver something, I'm not there, and you have to wait for a day to be delivered again. So, uh, in terms of your technology platform, the ability to see into these physical delivery endpoints in real time is also very key in terms of optimizing your e-commerce uh, business. So, uh, I'll, you know, next I'll talk a little bit about sort of how Rakuten is really approaching or answering some of these trends, as well as uh, talk into a little bit about sort of the disruptive technologies that's coming out and which I really think is going to change the landscape of e-commerce drastically. So, uh, as mentioned earlier, because of the, all the different scenarios that exist, what you want to do is actually provide a platform to, uh, to handle and build a very large ecosystem. So you have the ability to reach users across whatever uh, they want to do. So for Rakuten, uh, we focus on three major areas. First uh, is traditional e-commerce, which uh, you know, I think most people are aware of. But what we want to do is actually augment with digital content, and this is where we have made a lot of a large acquisition recently. Uh, because digital content is actually truly global. You can buy anywhere and use it anywhere versus e-commerce. And then finally, uh, the third major services is really finance. You know, we need to be able to help pay uh, as well as fund people to, to complete their transactions. And all of this is tied together to uh, a very strong membership system that can touch the user uh, anywhere, anytime, which is our Viber acquisition. Okay. So in terms of our uh, technology stack or product stack, uh, the first part is, okay, in order for us to win, we must be able to communicate to everybody. And this is why we spent a lot of money to acquire uh, Viber, right? As people know, emails are dying. However, through mobile app or through uh, actually Viber, is, uh, you can install it almost in PC and many mobile devices. You can have a way to reach the user. From there, it'll open up to many, many uh, commerce opportunities. So in terms of the core e-commerce, we do have a platform called the Global Rakuten Merchant System. So it's a globally distributed platform where merchants around the world, no matter what country you are in, you enter your product once into our uh, server, and we have many, many different ways for us to pull the product out and sell it into different countries, as well as sell it into different uh, formats. So that's very key. Most people don't see it because uh, you know, it's a very um, back-end system. 
The, the third part is the scenario where, um, you know, where it's much harder to do now, everybody wants it, uh, is really the ability to track only omni-channel uh, attribution. Right? What is the real impact between the offline world or actually multiple digital world uh, channels to figure out what is really helping you communicate out to the consumer and how is that really converting um, to, to the purchase? And just as I um, mentioned before in Chopkick, is that the, your best user might not be the one to actually purchase. It might be the person to help trigger a lot of the other people to finally c commit to, the, to purchasing. So attribution for publishers is very key, and uh, over the last five years, I think Rakuten also acquired uh, four or five companies around this area, so we can see the complete picture of how um, uh, the intent to purchase starts, and how does it end, and we can give credit to all the different channels on how it actually did help the consumer make the purchase. Um, and then, you know, finally, there's many, many ideas coming out, and the two that's the most recent uh, is Rakuten Point Club, uh, which is the ability to spend points anywhere in physical shops. And interesting, the uh, second one is Rakuten Cafe. So we actually built, uh, built our own coffee shop in downtown Shibuya, where, uh, of course, we're testing out our, a lot of our technologies, but it's also a way for us to showcase some of the merchants we have that used to bake their own uh, cakes or create their own sweets online, but nobody gets a chance to try it besides reading reviews. So now through Rockin' Cafe, we actually have a lot of our merchants' um, goods actually in there, so you can go and buy and try it, and, and hopefully that will lead to more online sales in, in the future for you to be at home. So uh, what does all this mean? Well, it really means that in terms of technology, what you want to build is, uh, of course you want to create a very strong mobile-first uh, experience, because mobile is everywhere with you. But the second part, which is, I think, becoming a little bit more popular, although I still don't think it's a wide adoption, is the concept of sort of cloud-scale design. So some of the uh, large corporations there are doing cloud-scale design, but I don't think they have really taken advantage of cloud-scale uh, architecture. What does that mean? It means we have the ability to deploy our solution into uh, Europe, into <coughs> Asia, into UK, into a specific country like Germany, where they have uh, very large, very strong data privacy laws. So, so you want to be able to create your system so that you can deploy everywhere, in addition to be able to connect to each other. So there are many systems you can scale out to many different locations, but the way to communicate is still uh, not the best. Okay. So here, just to show you that for Rakuten, um, you know, we're growing everywhere around the world, and really, uh, in order to compete, you have to build ecosystems in every single country, because every country is different. Uh, if you want to really uh, be a major player there. Okay, so going to disruptive technologies, um, I feel this one is actually gonna change probably the most because it is the most, it's a technology that, that is already happening, it is advancing really, really fast, and I know it can happen. You can actually see it uh, happening every single day. Uh, and that is the ability to print products on demand using 3D printing. So today, uh, you know, the 3D printing technology, you can print metal, you can print food, you know, you can build, you know, any traditional um, um, products like, you know, bicycle or gun or, I mean, there are many, many different things. Or even now, there's actually organic compounds, like human parts you can actually print. So imagine a world where you buy something online that used to be manufactured, let's say, in uh, China or Korea over in the U.S., Instead of waiting for it to be shipped over, your printer at home actually just prints it out. After you purchase, immediately you can get this good and start using it. Uh, imagine, uh, in addition, you know, maybe it's too expensive to buy something like that for home. Imagine there's new companies being created where it's just a little store with tons of 3D printers, they can print anything, and when you buy something online, you actually just walk to that store, and now you can just pick it up and use it. And you don't have to wait for delivery that might take you know, weeks or uh, months, depending on what type you're doing. So I feel uh, the advancement of this technology when we reach to the end where it's very cost efficient is really going to change uh, the, the landscape of e-commerce. And a lot of the product categories will actually disappear. Many, many product categories that now you sell and buy online will actually disappear and it will be created at your home or some uh, store. Okay. The, the second disruptive technology where I feel there's really no solutions for it yet 
at this point. But all the major companies, uh, including Rakuten too, I didn't put ours on there, that we're doing a lot of research into this. And that is the ability to, for you to say, uh, I want to buy something, I see it, and I want to buy it now. Okay, so how do you identify this? So traditionally, we're actually now, not traditionally, uh, happening now, is there's many sort of image or video recognition technology. And maybe there's technology like RFID or Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth uh, low energy, where it helps you identify the product. But what happens if something in the future that exists where it can give you that answer very, very quickly? Um, so there's you know, a lot of research that go into that. But ultimately, no matter what it is, uh, different manufacturing retail have to work together. So we finally go into this world where there is a universal ID to identify you know, this, this uh, um, presentation controller or this chair or you know, whatever you want to buy, is that there must be an international universal system that, the, uh, that can identify what it is. And until that happens, it's going to be very, very hard for us to achieve this seamless uh, purchasing experience. And then finally, uh, the, the last major barrier and why a lot of the VCs are also putting a lot of money into the space is really around the universal currency or virtual currency. And because payment is also one of the biggest problems today when you try to do global e-commerce. You know, there's exchange fees, there's fluctuation of marketplace, uh, um, and there's, you know, some, some places has strong uh, uh, depreciation of currency or appreciation. So it's very, very unstable. And in order to do global e-commerce, this is very, very tough. So whether it's Bitcoin or another emerging currency, maybe the governments will finally back, back up with each other. So that someday we can say, hey, this thing here is worth two currency. And no matter what country in the world, you know this is worth two currency. Uh, when that happens, this is where uh, products can be shifted very easily around the world uh, free, freely. So, so I think global e-commerce will uh, finally be open when this can be achieved. So uh, for, for, I guess, Korea, it would be OK Cash Bag. For Rakuten, we have Rakuten Super Points. So these are currencies within our own ecosystem to make it uh, seamless for you to use. But we need one that's going to be able to be shared across uh, all the retailers around the world. Uh, so finally, I'd like to uh, leave everybody with a thought about what the future is going to be, and I believe this will happen. Uh, maybe it will happen within five years, so it's not 20 years. I feel it's going to happen uh, very, very soon. Is that when you go out uh, anywhere or today, that you should be able to pick something up and really see or identify, this is what I want to buy. And immediately, whether it's your phone or a different type of new product through IoT that comes out, you can immediately get access to all the different ways you can pay and buy it and how it gets to you uh, seamlessly. And there are gonna be merchants that's gonna compete with you at that point, no matter where you are. So you're not gonna be in a store, you're not gonna be at online at home on a computer. Where you physically are, you'll be able to do something and see it and people's gonna compete. You're gonna be able to maybe do nothing or do something very light, complete the purchase, and then finally, uh, whatever you have just committed to purchase, you know, magically uh, be delivered to your home, uh, maybe made it you know, in a 3D printer at your home, or maybe just credit it to your account so you have the ability to have it. So I think the future of e-commerce technology will finally wrap it all together to really put this power into your fingertips and uh, it'll become a reality within the next five years. So thank you, thank you very much.